Hey everyone and welcome back to Salem. In this episode we are going to work on building up our base a little bit, working on building some walls. So first off what you're going to need is the skill Simple Fences. It's right selected here. I'll show you. I've already learned it. <clears throat> what you will need is uh, 800 Arts and Crafts, 2000 Hammer and Nail, and 800 Law and Lord. It's not too much. Uh, very easy to get. Um, that's just to build the stone hedge itself. But before we do all of that, uh, we're going to focus on getting the materials to do it and planning it out a little bit. So I want uh, to show you guys that I have collected uh, some pig iron. I've smelted it, I mean, and I've been collecting it. So I haven't made a video in a while. I'm sorry about that, but I'm going to be getting back to that as soon as possible. This is the first of many to come. Let's study a little bit. So anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our build menu and tools and utilities. Open up the uh, anvil and we're going to build one of these anvils. And what we can do with this is this pretty much lets us smell, or sorry, uh, craft any metal object. Um, for example, nails. We won't ever have to buy nails again. We can just craft our own right here. So I'll show you how that works in a moment because we're going to need some nails. Uh, to build our mine support that I showed you in the last episode because we're going to be mining a lot of uh, rubble out of here today and I'll show you how that works so we don't want to have a cave-in. So what we're going to do is go to our crafting menu. Um, it's going to be in the uh, processing materials, nails, and we're going to select the anvil and we're going to use it and we're going to craft the nails. You'll see my iron is uh, selected. It doesn't take very long at all. And as you see now, I have five nails. How great is that? We don't ever have to go get nails again. Pain in the ass to get, I know. So, now that we have that, I've already gotten the materials for the mine support. If you don't remember, it was two dry boards, two regular boards, and one nail. Unless they've changed that, I don't think they would have since I uh, haven't made a video. Let's see here. I believe the uh, mine support is in structures. Yep, building in structures and then mine support. As you see, it has a little uh, radius. It shows what we're going to be working with. I'm going to be putting in this corner only because we have iron right here. So I want to have that nice area to work on with the iron. So I'm going to place it right here. Drag in there. And we are all set. So I'm going to show you what we're going to do with this. Eat a little more. Alright, great. Now we have our mine support, and anywhere that is covered in that radius is almost like 99% uh, prone to, uh, or sorry, uh, it is exempt, I guess, from uh, those uh, cave-ins, so we don't have to worry about them pretty much. So let me move this boulder over, and I'm going to show what we're going to work on. What we're going to do is we're going to collect this uh, wall, this piece of wall, we're going to mine it out. And once I do that, I will show you what we're going to do with it. So we're going to place it down, and what this is, is this is just a regular boulder, and when we mine it, I'm going to chip a little bit, you will see that I have some rubble. And what this rubble does is it acts just as a regular stone wood that you would uh, mine out of a rock, a rock boulder. It is pretty much, I wouldn't say exactly the same, but for... For purposes of this video, it is exactly the same. It will do the same amount of pavement, the same style. It will use a. It will be used as a regular stone in a crafting recipe. It will also be used as a regular stone in a building recipe. So, essentially, it is the same thing as a regular stone. Uh, it is very easy to get. You don't have to really go anywhere to get this. It's very simple. So, I would recommend getting all of your stone this way. And if I show you outside. I've created a little bit of storage uh, to put on my uh, to put on my sled. So I'm gonna shift click these in there, and now I have a lot of extra space, um, and I'm going to bring that over. I also have two boxes, uh, two new boxes at my base that I can store these in. So you want to have a little bit of extra storage. If you don't notice, I also have a backpack on my back, and I can open it right here, or I can go in my equipment menu, and it'll be equipped. I bought this at a player stall, it's about 180 silver I believe. What this does is it reduces your weight uh, of any object you put in it by half. So let's say I wanted to put this uh, saw in, and if you see I have 11.2 carry weight over on the top right corner by my map. 
and it lowered to 10.98. Now it doesn't matter too much with smaller numbers, but with things such as iron bars or stone, it is really helpful to carry heavier objects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to collect all of these stone that I need and I will forward this to the next part of the video where I'm going to show you how to pave your area first. And we are back. I just collected a bunch of rubble, 60 in these boxes total and then a few more over here. And I'm going to use it to place the pavement around to plan out my wall. So the best way to do this is first of all you're going to want to take your pavement, it's in the adventure, bu adventure um, button and you're going to drag it over to one of your hop bar keys if you have any space. Next you're going to go to the uh, land selector tool, the control L, area selection. I'm going to select an area. Now I do want you to know there's no real best way to do this. It's pretty much up to your preference. Obviously you do want to have at least one tile in from your perimeter, uh, from your uh, personal claim. The reason you want to have this is because let's say someone wants to break in and they want to break into your claim. So they're going to start bashing in and what happens is if they aren't standing in the personal claim, if they're just bashing from the outside, then they will not get any drain from standing on your claim. So you want to have them have at least one tile to stand on while they break in because it'll drain them a lot faster. Now the other thing you want to remember uh, is pretty much where you're going to enter and how much space you want at first. Now I want to have two doors. I always like to start with two doors because it's always a pain to break down walls. So I will put a door over here I think because I have my farm over here and the water's that direction. And I'm also going to be using my mine often so I want a uh, door on my mine side. So let's select a little bit of an area. I, I want some area to walk. I don't want to break this kiln down anytime soon so I'm going to select right about the door is too wide, so these two tiles, if you can see, will be a door. So I'll have it right here will be my corner. Now you got to remember you have a corner, another corner post, and then you have a gate in between, and it'll look like that. So corner, corner, and a double tile gate. So I'm going to have my corner here and stretch this. And if you see um, over here, I have an extra tile of space. If it's not too clear, I'll show you there. You should see right here I have my personal claim. I'll toggle it on and off so you can see. Um, so I have my tile that they can stand on and I want to make it uh, all the way around just like that So we have a 14 by 19 uh, Square you can pretty much turn this into perimeter so 14 plus 14 19 plus 19 That's how much rubble I will need and I should have enough I'm not going to count in my head, but it should be just about right So I'm going to take my pavement I'm going to pick up a little more of these uh, rubbles the rubbles <laughs> uh, So and I'm going to place a corner uh, pavement at each corner and the way you do this is take your pavement click on the corner of each uh, of each part of the tile so I'm going to click on this, this corner click on the second corner over here uh, click on the third corner uh, frog got in my way <laughs> it's okay so I'm going to click on this last corner over here we'll click on the right one there we go Oh, uh, those are one of the, uh, it's a leaf, the autumn leaf pavement. Those get covered. But that's fine. So we know where it is, and I want to enter somewhere around here. I have my claim stone here, so I might as well have my gate. I'll put the one corner post here for one side of the gate and the other side. you got to remember a gate is too wide, and it has a corner post on each side. So I'm going to have a corner here and a corner here. And I also wanted a gate over here next to this corner. So I have my corner. One, two for the gate, and then three for the other corner. And as you can see, now I have everything planned out. Now, what you can do is, if you don't want to have a pavement at all on your area, except maybe for a house and whatnot, the reason you might not want pavement is because you can actually see it from the minimap, because the minimap will load the pavement. Uh, it'll, it'll pretty much load it out. So if you don't want to be found as easily, I mean, chances are you'll eventually be found, it, so it's more about defending yourself than not trying to get found. But if you want to be very secretive, you can uh, try to avoid pavement. I'm not going to worry about it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually connect everywhere that I don't want to gate. So right here I'm going to leave blank, and right here I'm going to leave blank everywhere else. I am going to uh, extend the pavement all the way up. So I will leave you guys. I'm going to come back in a minute when I finish this. It shouldn't take very long. It should take maybe a two minutes, uh, but I'm not going to bore you guys. And I will come back and show you the next part.
what you're going to want to do. Alright guys, so we are back. I have collected uh, some rubble, lime, and granite. As you can see over here, I had to quarry some of these boulders out. And the reason I did this is because the stone hedge actually requires three different types of stone to build it. And those are the three you're going to need. Um, I recommend keeping these in the boulder form because you don't want to have your granite or lime being used up as you build these stone hedges. I have mentioned before, they're all categorized under the rock category, so if you try to scroll them into the building recipe, you'll actually deplete your resources. And they're a little bit harder to get than the rubble that we're going to use for the stone. So whenever you have lime or granite in your inventory, I recommend using that before anything else. So we're going to click on the stone hedge. It's in the buildings and structures and then claims and defenses stone hedge. I'm going to place it right here where my um, gate is going to be. I'm going to have it right outside on that corner post. Now you want to remember that the starter post is going to lead into stone hedge uh, extended ones. And there's also going to be a corner post that you can place on each corner. Um, you can't extend past the gate. You're going to have to build a gate in between two corners. So essentially, if you have more than one gate, you will actually have to have more than one starter post. And the problem with that is starter posts use a lot of resources versus uh, the corner post that only uses uh, about half the resources that a starter post does. So you want to try to use as, uh, the least amount of these as possible. Uh, I'm going to have to use two here, so we're going to start this one. I'm going to have the 10 granite first. Uh, let me add three more. And then the rest of the lime. Build that in first. Get the lime and granite built. You don't want to, like I said, you don't want to lose all those. And I'll start adding the uh, stone here. So this is probably the most demanding part of the process is building the cornerstones, mainly the starter corners because they just require, uh, sorry, require so many resources. <clears throat> so we have our first starter corner. Now I'm going to build the other one right across and that way we can just have a easy, simple setup here. So I'm going to collect a little more of this granite. Actually, no, I have enough granite in there. I'll collect the rest of the slime that I need. And I'm running a little low on the rubble. I have a whole bunch here. I have 60 more in these boxes. So I will show you how that works. And I'm going to show you how to extend the wall as well. And how it works with the directionals. It's relatively easy once you get the hang of it. Um, it's definitely easier to watch this tutorial first, of course. Get your get your foot into it so we're about ready there we go now I'll build this second starter corner here and again the reason I did this is because I can't extend past this gate so anywhere past the gaps you're not gonna be able to extend past unless you want to destroy whatever you have left of the uh, of the wall and that'll take some time so I recommend just having those two starter corners it's very essential <clears throat> All right, so almost done here. Let me get a few more of those uh, rubbles out. Uh, one, two way. And there we have it. We have just enough for our second corner. Now, when you build a extension of these corners, the Materials required are very low actually. All you need is three rubble or any other stone for that matter and one granite. Uh, very simple and easy to make. So I'll show you that in a second. I gotta get more of this rubble out. And like I said before, the rubble is used as stone. As you can see, I have all the stone coming in really easy. Just had to go mine it out. So, like I said, this is much easier. Now, when you right click on this cornerstone, you're gonna see all these options. You're gonna see build gate to the north, which is obviously this way. And the way I'm going to orient my map is I'm going to go right above my head, keep the map straight, keep the line up straight. And if you see on my map, I have the uh, autumn forest to my north on the map. So as you can see, I'm looking forward, which is obviously north. So I've already oriented myself. But if you want to orient yourself again, you can move around on your mini map and you will see which direction you're moving. So uh, I am facing north right now. And if I want to go this direction, I'm actually going to start going the south direction. So if I want to go south, I'm just going to right click on this uh, starter post and extend it south. And you'll see I place a starter, uh, sorry, a, an extension on that wall right there. So I'm going to put my granite in and my rubble and I have my extension. I'm going to do this up until I get to this corner. And once I get to this corner, all I have to do is 
uh, you have to pretty much just when you're about to extend it, instead of extending it into a regular extension, you'll see extend south and place corner post. You want to place a corner post right here, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to select the tool right here. So right where I'm standing is where you want your corner post. So I'm going to finish up these walls, and I will come back in a minute, um, and I will finish up this tutorial with building your gates. Alright everyone, so we've just finished the the full wall. Um, I put in another gate over there. As you can see, that's the gate I was talking about, so I'd have some room uh, to go attend to my fields. And the main gate, which is near the front, which has access to the mine uh, down, the, down the walkway over there. So the last step in finishing your final product is building the gate. So I'll show you how to do that. You're going to right click, you're going to have that double space, so I'm going to take out my selection tool. As you can see there's two spots right here. I will right click um, my uh, corner post here to build the gate. So you right click the corner post and build a gate. And a little sign will pop up. So you're just going to drag your materials in as you would usually. And as you can see, it is almost finished. And here you have it, a working gate. Let me close this out. So there you go, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, now we have our own wall. Now, mind you, these gates, if someone feels like opening them, they are protected by the personal claim, meaning that someone cannot just come in without leaving a scent. But if they if they choose to, they can technically open the door. Uh, so stay tuned and check out the channel. I will be posting another tutorial in a few hours, most likely, uh, from posting this one uh, regarding the locksmithing, uh, making locks, attuning locks, and also torch posts, which will defend your your walls. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye-bye. <laughs>